Hello everyone, Stormoko here. Today I'll be telling you about my Mermail Atlantean deck, which I took to an undefeated finish at Locals this past weekend. I believe that the deck will be quite strong in Master Rule 5, and plan to take it to Nationals later this year. To start us off, I was running two copies of Mermail Abyss Megalo, the big beat stick daddy sea serpent of the deck. Uh, easily summoned, he can attack twice, and he searches the Abyss Speller Trap, Abyss Scale of the Mizuchi. The Abyss Scale of the Mizuchi gives 800 attacks the Mermail is equipped to and negates the first spell that resolves any opponents on the field. With Megalo, you can equip him and attack twice for 6400 damage. You can also negate things like Super Poly with that. Very useful. Next, we are running three copies of the best combo starter in the deck, Mermail Abyss Teus. He discards one water monster to summon himself, and when he does so, he searches any level 4 or lower Mermail. To that effect, we are running one Mermailibus Pike, level 4 that can search any level 3 water monster by discarding a card. We are also running one copy of Mermailibus Gund. Uh, when she's discarded for any reason, you can special summon Mermail from your graveyard. One copy of Mermailibus Dine. When she's searched by a Mermail, like Mermailibus Pike or Mermailibus Teus, you can special summon her. And if she's special summoned by the effect of a Mermail monster, you can special summon a level 3 or lower Mermail from your graveyard. She's a simple way to get a body on board, and with these two cards, there's a nice combo where you discard Mermelibus Goond, special summon Mermelibus Dine, Dine summons Goond, you get two monsters in the field for free. Next we have a little combo package consisting of Mermel Abyss Osha and Mermel Abyss Mander. The simple version of this combo is if you can get Mermel Abyss Osha on the field in any way, while you control a level 7, say Tius, you can use Osha's effect, tribute the level 7, Special Summon Mermail Abyss Mander, and a level 3, probably Mermail Abyss Dine if you can help it. Um, then you link off the Mermail Abyss Mander, and you can make a rank 4 using the two level 3s after increasing the level by 1. Next we'll move into the Sea Serpents. 2 Deep Sea Diva, the princess of the deck, special summons any level 3 or lower Sea Serpent from the deck. The primary thing you'll be summoning with her is the all-star MVP combo starter of the deck, Nephibus the Atlantean Prince which you run three copies of. This guy is the card that makes the deck relevant, I'm gonna say. Uh, if you open Neptibus, you're probably at tier two status or higher. If you don't open Neptibus, you're not much better than when Mermails came out in 2014. Resolving his effect is almost always a plus one. He sends Atlanteans as cost to search Atlanteans, which lets you trigger their effects. So normal summoning him outs floodgates, um, searches any sea serpent, searches dragoons, searches things to use to pop, um, and when he's sent to Graveyard for a water effect, you special summon Atlantean from the Graveyard, and you can use both those effects in a turn. Best card in the deck. And to tutor him out, of course, we run one copy of One for One. Next up, we have two copies of Atlantean Heavy Infantry. This is simultaneously an extender and interaction by letting you normal summon extra times or destroying your opponent's cards. I'm also running one copy of Atlantean Marksman, which is also an extender and interaction. Um, although it's a little less reliable, you have to attack directly to summon any Atlantean from deck and destroy set cards. I was very happy with these ratios and would not change them. We are also running three full copies of Atlantean Dragoons. This card is the lifeblood of the modern Mermail Atlantean deck. Without it, you can't really do a whole lot. It searches any Sea Serpent, which includes Megalo, it includes all the Atlanteans, and some Tech one ofs one of which is Moulin Glacier the Elemental Lord, which is a key function of the Mermail deck going first by ripping two cards from your opponent's hand at random. It also has a skip your battle phase drawback, which we attempt to get around with the extra deck. My other one of Dragoon's target is Lapis Dragon, which I ran one copy of as a free extender. I actually summoned it once by drawing it for turn. Next up is three copies of Swap Frog. This is one of the best extenders in the deck. It has some additional utility beyond your normal frog functions by sending a certain level 1 aqua monster from deck to graveyard, and if you discard a Mermail Abyss Goon, you can summon a Mermail from graveyard. To accompany these three, I'm running the requisite one copy of Ronin Toten, which you send to the graveyard with Swap Frog's effect, and if you have a Swap Frog already in graveyard, you can special summon it for free by banishing the Swap Frog. Together, these let you properly summon the almighty Totally Awesome. And here's that tech level 1 aqua, Testudor at Newman, it's a floodgate for monsters that have 1800 or more attack. You can send it off of the Almighty Swap Frog. I won a couple of games summoning this, 
And opportunity cost is low because it's just a discard in the worst case scenario. Next we have Kristron Rosenix, which is simple discard fodder. If you banish it from the graveyard, you can get a level 1 machine water type token to link someone with. You can search it by sending Kristron Thistvern to the graveyard and then banishing it from the graveyard. Together these help you keep up hand advantage a little bit with all your discarding. And our final water monster for the deck. One copy of Aqua Spirit. I like this the best out of the level 4 extender options for water decks because it is an aqua to tribute for Totally Awesome and it helps you modulate your graveyard a little bit to make summoning Moulin Glacier easier. On to the spells. We are running one copy of Moria of Greed to kind of fix hands a little bit. Next, we have to run three copies of Call by the Grave. Our combo lines are a little susceptible to hand traps, particularly Deep Sea Diva, so this is our best way to interact with things like Ash Blossom and Effect Veiler. It's also a great interaction in your opponent's turn. This is honestly one of the best spells that's still legal at 3. Next we have our Power 1 ofs, Foolish Burial, Monster Reborn, and the recently released Pot of Avarice. The worst case for Foolish Burial is that it's a copy of a Crystron Rosenix Grave. Monster Reborn is Monster Reborn, and Pot of Avarice lets us recycle crucial things like Atlantean Dragoons that we could never recycle before while giving us two draws. All of these are extremely powerful in the deck and I would not cut them. Now for the extra deck. I'm running two copies of Mermail Abyssalatia. This is our best card to make going first, allowing us to use Heavy Infantry and Atlantean Marksman as interaction on our opponent's turn. It's also our best card in the grind game, so I wanted two copies. Then we are running one copy of Marinces Coral Anemone. This is a crucial card in a lot of our combos because it gives us access to things in the graveyard like Mermail Abyss Osha, Nethibus the Atlantean Prince, and Testudo at Newman. That's it for the water links. We are also running one copy of the ever-present Nightmare Phoenix just to deal with some back row. We can discard cards like Mermail Abyssagund or the Crystrons to maintain advantage. Next up we run one copy of the honorary Mermail boss monster Blackluster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos. Most of the time when we summon this, it will be immune to targeting and destruction by card effects. We are also running one copy of Borolo Dragon as a way to out boss monsters that otherwise would be invincible for the deck, like the untargetable and destructible Blackluster Soldier. Next up, Synchros. We run one copy of Coral Dragon, which we can make with Deep Sea Diva and a level 4, or Neptibus and a Lapis Dragon. It's good removal going second, and if you're going first, you can use it as an intermediary on your way to Trishula to draw a card. Speaking of which, we are running one copy of Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. This is kind of like Coral Dragon in that it's excellent going second. You can also make it going first to banish a card from your opponent's hand and restrict the resources even more. And that's it for Synchros. Moving on to the bulk of the deck, Xyz Monsters. We are running two copies of Totally Awesome. One so we can make it with Swap Frog, and the other so we can make it with our friend, Bahamut Shark. This guy summons Totally Awesome, and he procs Dragoons if you detach Dragoons for material. Next up, we are running one copy of All-Star Grave Floodgate Abyss Dweller. This is part of our optimal end board, and also triggers Dragoons when you detach it, because it's a water monster. I'm running one copy of Mermel Abyss Gaios, as just a floodgate to end on if your hand is a little awkward. I don't get to make it often, but when I do, it's always strong. The last rank 7 is Red-Eyes Flare Metal Dragon. I never made it, but it's really nice to have that option just to close games out. And our final extra deck monster is the rank 8 AG on the Sea Castrum. Uh, it's not an amazing card, but it is the only rank 8 XCs that takes two materials. It's nice to sometimes disrupt your opponent's extra deck or maybe get lucky and pop something, but the real reason you run it is to get Moulin Glacia off of the field by using a level boosted Teus or Megalo. You can do this using Mermel Abysmander. Now for the side, I'll keep this quick. One Ash Blossom for going second. One Pancratops, one Red Reboot, one Twin Twisters, and one Galaxy Cyclone. Ideally, the Twisters and the Cyclone will be Lightning Storms, but the Red Reboot and the Pancratops are kind of irreplaceable cards. It's a pretty basic back row hate package for going second. Then we are running one copy of the classic Rageki. Also probably should be Lightning Storm, but I don't have them yet. Just good for going second. One Imperial Order, uh, when you know you're going first and your opponent has a lot of spells, just side this in and blow them out. 
Then when we know we're going first, three copies of Solemn Judgment, and it stops things like Dark Ruler no more, and is a generally just great going first card. And finally our package for going second. We have three Gamma Seal the Sea Turtle Kaiju, which just gets rid of a problem monster. Gets rid of any problem monster except like Darkest Diablos or Special Summon Floodgates. Then we have two Mind Control to handle everything else, including Appaloosas. That's it for the deck profile. Thanks for watching.